This is your marketplace. Supermarket secrets inside the biggest chains. They're missing a good quality control program. Hidden cameras and lab tests. Stick to those swabbers. From food safety. High risk on uh, causing food poisoning. This milk product is going to spoil very fast. To pandemic protocols. There's no soap in the bathroom. And what's the germiest surface in your grocery store? I'm literally shocked. We've got your back. The dirty truth about supermarkets starts now. Hidden cameras? Check. Let's do this. Canada's largest grocery chains? Check. How safe is your supermarket? We're about to find out. We're testing cleanliness, safe food temperatures. This one's at about 16.5. And COVID protocols. Where can we get the cart? Uh, are they sanitized? Uh, yeah. We've got seven years worth of health inspection records for the big chains, Loblaws, Sobeys, Metro, Costco, and Walmart. We visit stores with some of the most serious infractions. We'll dish the details soon. But first, meet Kirk Comrie. He says he got COVID-19 after shopping at his local Toronto Loblaws back in April. His wife, Ashley, got sick too. From early March, we were basically self-isolating in the house, um, going out as little as possible. Ashley never left the house. Um, and myself only going out for absolutely necessary trips, like going out for groceries. What was having COVID like? Having COVID was frightening. It is nothing like the flu. It is like a dump truck full of flu sitting on your chest. It came on so fast, like it went from, uh, I have a, a nagging cough, to a massive fever and breathing issues. Kirk says he saw a few red flags at the store. His biggest concern, the crowd. This is a photo of you, you're wearing your mask, and then there's a long lineup of shoppers behind you waiting to check out. There was this lineup that went sort of past the tills and down past the freezers. So once I followed it, it went the entire width of the store and then about 15 feet along the back of the store. There had to be 30 people standing in line waiting to check out because they only had three tills open. It was basically a half an hour wait in a lineup full of people. And as you can see in the picture, you know, maybe 20% of them are wearing masks. Masks were not required in Toronto supermarkets at the time, but Kirk was wearing one anyway, because Ashley is immunocompromised. I texted Ashley and sent her these pictures and was like, this is crazy. Like, this, this is not cool. <laughs> Days later, he gets these emails from Loblaws saying two employees tested positive for COVID-19. Kirk and Ashley also test positive. Ashley's journey, it's been really, really difficult. She was in hospital for about three days and seemed to be sort of stabilized when her oxygen levels suddenly tanked. Yeah, so at that point, they, they rushed her into ICU and she spent the next three to four days fighting for her life. I spent several, well, more than several days very worried that I, I was not gonna see her again. Time for us to see what's going on inside the big chains. We visit stores in Canada's largest city, Toronto, with a long list of serious infractions, including this metro. Hi there. This store in North Toronto had pest problems as far back as 2016. So what do we find when we go in? Sure enough, we see flies in the bathroom. And some more in the meat section, like this one that doesn't seem to move. Thank you. Jim Chan knows the do's and don'ts as a retired Toronto health inspector. We show him our hidden camera video at an independent grocery store after hours. What's his take on the flurry of flies? Why didn't the staff check for things like that? Uh, to me, that's just being 
not just careless, but they're missing a good quality control program. I'm pretty sure that fly is dead. They're supposed to be doing their own daily health inspection before they should even be open to the public. So to me, something like this, if you can see it, if customer like myself can see it, why can't the staff seeing that and then remove it? As for pandemic protocols, we see hand sanitizer and an employee cleaning baskets. They're clean, right? Masks are now mandatory indoors in Toronto, and wearing them properly is essential. But that's not what we see during this spot check. Look at this guy in the meat department. His mask is under his chin. And we see one employee with no mask at all, standing and talking to another staffer. Management are responsible for training staff on health and safety issue. Why uh, no manager or anyone that asks that staff member to actually put the mask back on or tell this individual that don't put the mask down. Next on our list, food temperatures. We've got an infrared thermometer to test things out. Cold food should be four degrees or colder. This one's at about 16.5. Hmm, doesn't sound right. So we check out and check in with Jim Chan. We don't waste time. Jim starts testing the internal temperature of the cold stuff within minutes. It's showing about 15.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's way over the four degree uh, requirement. 11 degrees warmer than it should be. So if I picked up this sushi, you know, for lunch, mm -hmm. and I ate it, what would be the risks? If they've been sitting around in the refrigerator there last night or even the, this morning, anything over four or five hours, there's a risk of pathogenic organisms, which can actually cause quite a bit of diarrhea. Okay. okay? We're gonna try the marinated small octopus. And the octopus... is around between 17 to 20. That's up to 16 degrees warmer than the required temperature. That is actually an excellent incubation for bacteria. They will just grow like crazy in there. As a former health inspector, what would Jim Chan do? Get rid of it. These ribs and chicken are at a safe temperature. So we can eat that for lunch. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they get Jim's stamp of approval, but the rest of it would be a crucial infraction. If they have repeats, one or even twice, that should be a chargeable offenses. And then the inspector can actually issue a ticket. Turns out that's exactly what happened with this store in 2017. After getting caught twice for not keeping food cold enough, they were convicted and fined 460 bucks. We find more temperature troubles at this metro in downtown Toronto. Okay. You got the goods? Yep. Let's start with the cold first. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually holding around 9.4. This one actually got raw fish inside too. Yeah. And it's actually higher temperature. Yeah. 10.5. Okay. 10.5. So if a customer took this home, how bad would it be? If it's a hot day, you continue to have it at room te or warm temperature for another couple of hours, uh, it's actually quite high food safety risk and may actually high risk on uh, causing food poisoning. Food poisoning? That's right, because you have a combination of rice, you got raw fish, and those are actually handmade product too. Wow. Do you okay. want to check out this table cream? Yeah. Look, the reading kind of steady at around 11 or 9 to 12. This milk or milk product is going to spoil very fast, right. even get at home. Probably way before the best before date, because it's not sitting at the safe temperature. The hot food we test is hot enough. So, yeah, this one is safe. But Jim says this supermarket needs to do better. If you were on the job still, would you write this store up? Oh, yeah. We share our findings with Metro and they decline our request to come on camera. They tell us that they take the issues we outlined very seriously and immediately rectify them. And they add the stores we visited have passed all of their health inspections over the last two years.
Are supermarkets doing enough to keep you safe? Were you worried about getting COVID when you would go into work? Yeah, all the time. And which supermarket surface is the germiest? I'm shocked. I'm literally shocked. Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter at cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. We're putting some of the biggest grocery chains to the test in a supermarket spot check. Kirk Comrie believes he got COVID while shopping at Loblaws in April. His wife, Ashley, got sick too. She's recovering in hospital. Kirk hasn't seen her in person for six weeks. Hello. You look very good today. Ashley feels Loblaws could have done more. And I'm sure they had policies, but you need to make sure that those are actually being implemented. I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Love you. What's going on inside the store now? We're on the case. When we go in, we see clean carts, hand sanitizer, and plenty of space to physically distance. But at the fish counter, this employee uses his phone and then serves us, putting a glove on without washing his hands. Hi, um, could I get some salmon, please? Should he have washed his hands yeah. before he handled her food? Wearing gloves seems to be, look, I don't have to wash my hand because I have been using gloves. Gloves is actually worse than dirty hands because my dirty gloves can actually carry more contamination, okay, than your hands. Because your hands get dirty, you wash it. When the gloves get dirty, if you don't throw that away, it actually can be very uh, heavily contaminated. We're on our way to catch up with a former grocery worker who has his own hand washing concerns. Lucas Lee was a cashier at Fortino's, owned by Loblaw. I really didn't think about my own safety until I actually got behind the register and you know saw like hundreds of people come, uh, pass me by, coughing, not wearing masks. It, it wasn't until I actually started that I realized this job is, is actually kind of dangerous. And to make matters worse, in the employee bathroom... We'd ran out of soap in early May. Uh, the soap dispensers were out. We had two. One never worked, and the one that did work was out of soap. So you couldn't wash your hands after going to the bathroom? Right. I would think that they, they should have had more diligence um, in, in such an extreme time like, like the pandemic was. Health inspection records reveal a previous hand washing infraction at this Fortino's. What's going on now? We see wipes to clean your cart and hand sanitizer at the front. But we see some employees with masks under their chin. Management, don't just give staff masks to put on, okay? You have to tell them to put on and use them properly. If not, there's really no reason to, uh, to even issue masks, right? And in the public bathroom, This is empty. So there's no soap? No soap? We tell employees at the store. Excuse me, there's no soap in the bathroom. OK. They refill the soap, but should it be the public's job no. to tell them about it? Should never, they say it shouldn't be up the public's job. And even it shouldn't be the health inspector job to babysit the store. Lucas is not surprised. He quit Fortino's after two months on the job. He says putting his safety at risk was no longer worth it. We tell Labla about our findings, including what we heard from Kirk and Lucas. They won't come on camera, but say they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in safety measures and protocols, including temperature checks, masks, and gloves for employees, even when it wasn't required. As for no soap in the public bathroom when we visited, 
they apologized for the lack of soap at that specific time. What are you thinking? Well, I certainly won't be shopping here anytime soon, I can tell you that. Not long after Kirk shopped here, this store voluntarily closed for two weeks for a deep cleaning. Both Toronto Public Health and Loblaw say there was widespread community transmission of COVID-19 at the time Kirk and Ashley got sick, so it's difficult to pinpoint how they were infected. Kirk says, in hindsight, he would have left that crowded store. His advice for other shoppers? Well, I would say it, it falls to the individual to sort of maintain their own safety. Wear a mask, remain socially distanced, and get in and get out as quickly as possible. And now, this is the moment Kirk has been waiting for. It couldn't come quickly enough. Ashley gets discharged after eight weeks in hospital. She gets a big, warm welcome. Which supermarket surface is the germiest? I'm shocked. I'm literally shocked. Time for the big reveal on your marketplace. Do you have a story you want us to investigate? Write to us, marketplace at cbc.ca. This is your marketplace. Our swab squad is going into Canada's biggest chains, 24 stores in all, to rank which supermarket surface is the germiest. Swabbing basket handles, the debit machine, freezer door handles, and shopping carts from front to back. We're testing for bacteria and E. coli. All the major chains say they've beefed up their cleaning protocols during the pandemic, so we're putting that to the test. We collect the samples, pack them up, and take them to a lab. A couple of days later, our results are in. We ask microbiology expert Jason Tetro to break it down for us. It's very good for us to be able to understand where microbes are and how we can both live with them, but also stay safe. Time for the big reveal. Coming in at number five, the shopping cart handle, which turns out to be pretty clean. I'm shocked. I'm literally shocked. It turns out that, yes, indeed, that wiping every single time that you go by uh, as you're going into the store has been working. They were clean. The germ guy is completely shocked. Germ guy approved. <laughs> yes. Next up, the baby seat. This was a surprise. Baby seats normally would be one of the highest contaminated places on a shopping cart. But instead, we found almost nothing on those plates. Whatever is being done on those shopping cart handles, probably there's some of the liquid that's coming while it's being sprayed and it's getting onto that baby seat. And so whatever happens to be there is getting killed. Diving into some germier surfaces now, it's a tie for the next spots, the freezer door handle and the front of the shopping cart. You should not necessarily be touching the freezer door without hand sanitizer right afterwards. And the runner up, the basket handle. There's lots of bacteria. The basket handle is not getting the same attention as the shopping cart handle. The shopping cart handle is now the benchmark. What should we be looking for when it comes to a bacterial number? Well, now we know. We should be doing as good as the shopping cart handle, but we're not. Now for the number one surface with the most bacteria in a grocery store, the pin pad. The pin pads were incredibly germy. We saw lots of bacteria. They were the germiest. That tells me that the work that's being done to sanitize the debit pads is not enough. It really is something that we need to be taking a closer look at and maybe doing some better disinfection protocols. What do you say to people who believe, well, 
It's not that bad. I'm not eating off the debit machine. So the first thing you have to realize is you touch your face about 16 times every hour. You cannot help it. That's just who you are. And that's one way that bad germs can make you sick. Our tests found bacteria, but no E. coli anywhere. Now, when we walk into a grocery store, we actually have hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, as we all know, is really good at getting rid of E. coli. Jason has some tips the next time you're on a shopping trip. To avoid the pin pad, tap your card. So if you can go contactless, that is the optimal option for you. What do you do when you go to the grocery store? So for me, it's all about the hand sanitizer. Your own hygiene has to become routine. And the more that you adopt this in your regular life, then it becomes easier when you go into a place like a grocery store. Take matters into your own hands. Take your health into your own hands, absolutely. Some food for thought as you shop. Undercover at Canada's busiest airport. It's David, anybody else on the radio? Yeah, I'm uh, in the parking lot. I think they're coming over. A lucrative cargo. Hello! Investigating the international trade of puppies. Twice a year, we're babysitting dog. Questionable claims. Where does the mom come from? I don't know off the top of my head. Got some clear him. The dog was alive. That's pretty much the bare minimum to get through. Who's behind it all? The Lexus and the pickup truck. They're taking 427 northbound now. It's the ultimate pandemic price check. We're asking for the highest price hikes you've ever seen. We hear from you about shoppers, Sobeys, Canadian Tire, Walmart, Oceans, Amazon. Who's ripping you off? And are they getting away with it? If you're out there trying to price gouge, you're done, you're gone. Tough talk. We're going to go after you and throw the book at you. Any action? 500 milliliters, $19.99. That's obscene. Your marketplace, always on the case.